who's the guy behind the sixth largest company by market cap in the world? Uh, Jensen Huang from NVIDIA. Like, he's such a badass. He's got a giant tattoo of the company's logo on his shoulder. Uh, he wears leather jackets. He drives really fast cars. I don't need to change the world overnight. I'm going to change the world over the next 50 years. I don't need to build a killer product overnight. I just need to build a winning product. And the goal of winning is so that you can play again. My will to survive exceeds almost everybody else's will to kill me. And so I think that's, that's probably appropriate. It's him. His company powers the computer graphics that movies and the gaming industry rely on. His products are in more demands than any other at the moment. With first crypto miners and now all tech companies wanting their chips to use and advance AI. His products really push the world forward. The cool thing is he is a nerd, but you can listen to him for hours. He doesn't take himself too seriously and has an incredible story of how he was raised. I, I remember calling my mom and telling her that I'm going to start this company and she says, you know, what do you, what do you guys do? And I said, we build these things called 3D graphics chips and, and um, uh, people would use them to play games. And, and then she, she said, why don't you go get a job? <laughs> But that's not enough. The story of his company could easily come straight out of the script for a thriller. It was maybe seven times that you've been reinvented and faced, you know, success or utter failure. When NVIDIA began in 1993, it made computer graphic chips in a brutally competitive and low margin market with 90 undifferentiated competitors with the same idea. And what if uh, we uh, gave it the benefit of running 3D graphics programs so that um, uh, you could uh, explore new worlds, play games, um, you know, play games. But how did they manage to have an 83% market share in their segment now? How did a company started by a young immigrant entrepreneur become the world's most influential tech giant. What is it about Jensen's story that resonates with us? And what makes him a true trailblazer in the tech world? Today, we are exploring the remarkable journey of Jensen Wang, the founder and CEO of NVIDIA. Feel free to follow me for more content like this. Our journey begins in 1963 in Taiwan where Jensen was born to immigrant parents. His father already worked for a US company, but to save money, they moved to Thailand, where his mother, who didn't know how to speak English, taught them English vocabulary out of a dictionary. At the age of nine, he and his brother finally moved to the US to go to the cheapest boarding school there is. It was in the middle of nowhere. The funny thing was, the reason that this school was so cheap was it was actually not a prep school but a reform school a school for troubled kids so not only was he the only asian the city has ever seen but also jensen's roommate when he showed up as a nine-year-old as a 17 year old kid who had just gotten out of prison and was recovering from seven stab wounds that he got in a knife fight as jensen was super smart he told him maths and his roommate told him how to get strong and fit. This is really insane to me. And you can watch Jensen's commencement speech in 2020 of the school. Jensen continues to skip grades and ended up at college with 16. His fascination with electrical engineering led him to Oregon State University, where his brilliance caught the attention of advanced micro devices, AMD. There, he not only falls in love with math, but also with his lab partner, who he later marries. After college, he moved to Silicon Valley, where he was a director at LSI Logic and later a designer at AMD. There, he built up a network of people that was crucial for NVIDIA's success later on, as he got in touch with founders in a similar space. Uh, it wasn't my idea, it was theirs. Uh, Chris and Curtis wanted to, wanted to leave Sun. And, you know, just like, just like you, they, they wouldn't stop hounding me. And, <laughs> and they said, Hey, you know, we, we want to start this company and we really need you to come along. And, uh, and I told them that I really needed to have a job. And But the development of the chip was really slow. Jensen said itself, you could see it coming. That's about how fast it was that time. And now it's in milli millisecond. But the speed of innovation pushed Jensen to co-found NVIDIA in 1993 setting the stage for a series of bold bets that would transform the tech landscape forever. Every now and then, 
a technology revolution comes along. We were started in the PC revolution. Uh, after that, the internet revolution came. And then uh, the cloud computing revolution came. And then the mobile cloud computing revolution came. And now we're talking about the AI revolution. And so each one of these transitions, it's very unlikely that the companies that were great before it are still great after it. Uh, we had to reinvent ourselves you know, in each one of those technology revolutions. Jensen's journey took a pivotal turn when he co-founded NVIDIA with engineers Chris Malakowitzki and Curtis Prim. Their audacious idea? Develop a dedicated graphics card to enable 3D graphics to, on consumer PCs. And so uh, we started a, a company and, and the business plan uh, basically uh, read something like this. We're going to take uh, technology that was available only in the most expensive workstations. We're going to try to make it, reinvent the technology and make it inexpensive. So it shipped from 2D to 3D. Despite the crowded fields, NVIDIA became the first dedicated graphics card company introducing GPUs that would revolutionize the world of gaming and computing. With relentless determination, Jensen secured funding from Sequoia Capital and embarked on a journey to make GPUs an essential part of our technological future. That was only possible with his connection from his previous jobs as they were funded by the same VCs. His pitch was not very good and he didn't even finish his business plan. But the trust was still there. Everything was more improvised than planned. For instance, the name came from them always looking on the next version. So next version, short NV. And they went with it. They landed the first big deal with Sega to power the arcade consoles and their next generation home console to be the 3D graphics engine. But without Microsoft pushing the PC ecosystem forward, Nvidia would not have been there. DirectX, a competitor, figured out to use triangles for 3D graphics, so Nvidia was at a disadvantage in their technology. Consequently, Sega decided to switch horses and not adopt Nvidia's chip, leaving Nvidia about 9 months of runway left, so 9 months to bankruptcy. But one convinced his co-founders to throw out the original version and standardize on the same architecture as everyone else. Competing on performance to become the best chip out there in a sea of commodity chips. That really required all of them to leave their pride at home. Now they only focused on engineering decisions to be more performant and at a lower price point using less energy than competitors. So sadly they had to lay off 70 of their employees and design a new chip from scratch and ship it before everyone else. Doesn't seem too easy, right? As normally it takes around two years. So they found software to shorten down the time, but it was still extremely hard and tiring process. And the software is just a very small startup for which they were the first customer. So it meant one person was sitting there to see one new frame every 30 seconds to see if everything worked. And when it was fine, directly producing it without any prototypes, which was never been done before. And extremely risky, because if something goes wrong, they lose a lot of money. Luckily it worked, so their advantage was just being the first, 80 months before any other competitors. The product was far from perfect, but it worked and allowed them to gain immense insights into the gaming customers, but even more important, the developers. Still, only in 1997 they established themselves as a major player in the graphics card market. Two years later, they go public, giving Sequoia a more than 100x return on their investment. But compared to the valuation today, it's 2000 times more than the valuation of Sequoia at that time. Nvidia's rise was anything but smooth. As gaming PCs embraced GPUs, Jensen took a huge risk by focusing on AI and machine learning in uncharted territory at that time. It sounds crazy right now, but it really was at that time. It was considered a failed science. This decision was risky as it meant moving away from their core business and competing with established players in a new market. Jensen basically made this bet 
where he saw researchers using the, the GPUs, the gaming graphics yeah, they're like going to Best Buy and buying a bunch of NVIDIA graphics to, cards. To do AI research. And he was like, I think we should lean really heavily into this. And so he spent billions of, of dollars and thousands of headcount for five years to build up this like whole software stack called CUDA that if AI and ML was going to become a thing, then people were going to use CUDA to develop exclusively on NVIDIA's hardware. And so by the time it did become a thing, like five years ago, NVIDIA had this enormous moat around it. Despite skepticism and pressure, NVIDIA's dedication paid off. Their breakthroughs in CUDA technology propelled them to the forefront of the AI revolution, setting a new industry standard. By venturing into the unknown and relentlessly pushing boundaries, Jensen and his team transformed NVIDIA from a gaming-focused company into a technological powerhouse. Jensen Wan's leadership style mirrors his unassuming personality. He's not the typical tech celebrity, but rather a visionary who lets his actions speak louder than words. It's really inspiring to see him being the CEO since 1993, so 30 years now. Jensen's commitment to humility and confronting failures head-on became the bedrock of Nvidia's success. As they navigated through challenges that could have shattered lesser companies, but everyone has a perspective, and that's in fact all vision means. But you see the world uh, in a way that is either uh, different um, or uh, otherwise. 3D graphics could be used for a, lot, for a lot more than video games. Now, that, that vision, if you will, that perspective, um, was unique at the time and hard to sell. And so we had to go and explain it to venture capitalists who had to figure out whether the technology was going to be possible, how big was the market, because it was zero billion dollars at the time, a non-market. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's incumbent upon uh, the, uh, the venture capitalists uh, and, of course, the founders to try to figure out how to inspire each other into doing something together. And so we got the company going with $2 million. And so the story of Jensen and NVIDIA unfolds, a tale of persistence, innovation, and daring decisions that transformed a simple startup into the global powerhouse that shapes our digital future. NVIDIA's story reminds me that the path to success isn't always linear, but with determination, it can be truly extraordinary. Just a funny fact at the end, he bought 25% of NVIDIA shares for $200 in the beginning of the company. Imagine that return on investment. And that, my friends, is the extraordinary journey of Jensen Wang, a visionary CEO and co-founder. That So let's remember his journey and hope that we can develop further into a better and greater future. If you're hungry for more stories of visionaries who left an incredible mark on the world, don't forget to hit that follow button. Until next time, dream big, reach for the stars.